Hey guys, tonight we're driving the 2024 Acura Integra Type S. Last time I drove one of these was out at the launch in California. We're back in Michigan today. So let's sum up the week in this car. I've spent the last few days in this. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, let's walk you around this. We'll show you what the lighting looks like in the dark and uh, then we'll take it for a drive. So, get some basics out of the way. 320 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque from a two-liter turbocharged inline four-cylinder, six-speed manual transmission. Starting price is about $52,000. This Type S is painted in apex blue pearl with an orchid white interior. Really nice looking spec. We also get the copper wheels, which are an optional extra. Not completely sold on the copper on the blue, but it isn't a bad look. It just looks a little bit WRX STI for me. And of course, the Integra is very practical because it is a liftback. Look at that. A lot of nice height. Pull those rear seats down for extra cargo. This also has the carbon fiber rear spoiler. I don't have the exact price on this Type S that we're driving this week but I assume it's somewhere around the mid fifties. Full leather back seats. ELS 3D premium audio system, which is just fantastic. One of the best sound systems on the market. A little bit of a classier, more subdued interior. We made a lot of comparisons between this and the Civic Type R in the last video. That's not exactly what this video is about. We're going to be doing a separate video where we'll drive both cars back to back. Still, here's that venerable 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder. It is just a monster. It makes a lot of torque, a lot of power. Sounds pretty good with this exhaust, too. Very reliable, highly proven powertrain. Acura isn't really marketing this very much, but uh, these things are incredibly capable on track as well. As many of you know, I own a 2023 Honda Civic Type R. I've done a few track days in that this year, and it is just proven to be amazing on a race course. This has the same running gear, brakes, engine, suspension, uh, slightly different tuning, a little bit softer, a little more comfortable, but underneath they're pretty much the same car with some subtle differences. Again, for all those differences, stay tuned for our Type R versus Type S video or check out the POV first impressions drive we did out in California. All right, before the sun comes up anymore, let's go out and take this thing for a drive. We're going to put us into individual mode. Here's all of our customized settings. We might even throw the engine in Sport Plus for some pops and burbles. Interior lighting is super bright. Really nice look with these orchid white seats. Alcantara inlays here. Very comfortable. A little bit of piano black here in the center console. Wireless charging. Typical climate controls. Even the reverse camera looks pretty good in the dark. big fan of the exhaust in this Integra Type S. It's a really nice mix between turbo whistle, induction noise, you get some subtle burbles on downshifts and off throttle. And it just kind of growls away. Ultimately, it's maybe not as aggressive or as good sounding as something like the Elantra N 
but it's a really nice balance. It keeps it classy. You can quiet it down in comfort mode or in individual mode. Uh, you can make it louder or quieter, whatever you want. But yeah, it's just a really nice sounding exhaust. You can do the same thing to the Type R without the burbles uh, if you just delete the front resonator. Auto rev matching, this new system is so good. Hasn't skipped a beat all week. Suspension here is so well dialed in. Much more compliant than the Type R. And I think honestly, maybe it lacks a little bit of sharpness on turn in, but ultimately it handles just as well. Interestingly enough, I learned that you can actually swap the adaptive suspension module from this Type S into the Type R. It's a direct swap, even though this has Sport Plus and the Type R has Plus R mode, all the drive modes kind of adapt, and uh, you can get the Type S suspension in the Type R if you swap out that module. It's only a couple hundred bucks, and uh, it's something that I'm probably going to be doing to my Type R, because here on our rough Michigan roads, Type R is a little bit stiff, especially in the winter once things get cold. The highway speeds, pretty quiet, sounds pretty good. A little bit of noise from these Michelin PS4S's, but that's about it. Not a lot of wind noise. There's definitely a lot more insulation and NVH reduction here in this Integra versus the Civic, especially the Civic Type R. The Integra Type S doesn't see any reduction in sound deadening materials compared to the regular Integra. That said, this is still a performance car. It still has Type R roots, engine, powertrain, everything's a little bit buzzy, but that's okay. It's kind of part of the character of this car. Headlight performance is fantastic at night. Auto high beams work well. out in the canyons. I thought it was a bit more buttoned down than the Type R, but this feels like it has kind of the same balance. You can still get a bit of lift off oversteer. The handling here is really well dialed in. I actually really prefer the suspension of the Type R. It's not as bouncy, not as unsettled at the limit. The Type R suspension adapts to how you're driving, and this just tones it down a little bit, and it's kind of the perfect balance. Even on track and comfort mode in my Type R, I feel like it's over damped. And uh, this Integra Type S does a really nice job just kind of calming the chassis down and letting the suspension work and soak up bumps. Sometimes a little bit of compliance isn't a bad thing. So, we've got some drive modes. Comfort mode gives you kind of this weird blue gauge cluster. I guess it works with this car and the interior, but with the red interiors it looks a bit weird. Sport mode, and then Sport Plus and that firms things up a little bit. Suspension gets a little bit stiffer. Sport Plus is kind of equivalent to Sport Mode in the Type R. Sport is equivalent to Comfort, and Comfort is just kind of a lower, nicer setting. It's kind of the best suspension setting in my opinion. It's really well balanced. In comfort Mode, the exhaust valve is closed. Sport, it opens up a little bit. Sport Plus, it's open all the time. You lose the, the burn.
burbles and pops in sport mode, which is fine. You get some really nice extra luxury features in this Type S. It's great to have a head-up display. The sound system is a real highlight for me. Still though, I can't help but feel accurate could have added a little bit more for the price point. Would be nice to have seat memory settings over here instead of just a blank switch. Ventilated seats would be great. A heated steering wheel standard. You could get it as an option, but again, for the price, mid 50s, we'd like to see some of that stuff standard in this Integra Type S. But to be honest, those are just minor grievances ultimately to live with as a daily. This is such a complete car. It's such a cohesive, well put together and amazing to drive package. I have absolutely loved spending time with this thing this week. It's, uh, it kind of hits all the marks for the enthusiast. It's a bit more mature, a bit more grown up. Maybe not as cool as the Type R, but to drive and to live with, it's a bit easier of a proposition. Getting in and out, these seats allow pretty good ingress and egress while still offering a lot of support around corners. Granted, they're not gonna be as good on track as the Type R seats and they don't look as cool, but in real life, to live with, they're a little bit easier. I like all the colors that Acura is offering with this Type S. In a world where even a lot of performance colors are still offered in pretty bland options, reds, grays, neutral tones, blacks, whites, Acura is offering some pretty cool <laughs> colors for this Type S. Just one of the best six-speed manual shifters on the market too. Nice and smooth between gates, really short throw. The shift knob feels cool too. Nice and tiny in your palm. And even though this is a turbocharged engine, the response here is really, really good rev match downshifts to just rolling into the power. This turbo spools so fast. And there's just a little bit more torque in that usable lower down mid-range. All right, so how can we sum up the Type S? Really the only complaints I have here are it's a little bit pricey and I could do with a few extra features, but ultimately, this has just got to be the best, if not one of the best, practical do-it-all solutions for the modern enthusiast. It does it all. You can track it, you can take it out to dinner, you can do long road trips in it. It's fuel efficient, it's comfortable, it's spacious, practical, does all the things, and it's so engaging and visceral and exciting to drive. Probably one of the best front-wheel drive chassis ever made. I mean, this thing just, it handles incredibly well. It's comfortable, it does it all. It's a bit, I hate to say it, it's a bit more of a complete package in some ways than the Type R. You're paying a bit of a premium. Ultimately, both cars aren't that different, but the Integra separates itself with just an extra level of refinement. That's really nice to live with on a daily basis. And if you can't get your hands on a Type R, this Type S is just, as good if not better in some ways so you know a lot of it comes down to personal preference budget but you're probably going to be paying about the same money for a type r as you would on a type s i've seen a lot of type r's going up on forums recently for about type s money uh, i know dealers have different ideas but uh, i think type s's are a little bit more available at msrp too which is great i just see dealers tacking on a lot of options but ultimately um I've had a lot of friends who have bought these recently. 
<laughs> Zy Green, Q the Chaotic, a couple other people are looking, and uh, they absolutely love them. So the Integra, as a starting platform, as a starting vehicle, was a fantastic daily, and uh, this just puts it into a whole other league. Anyway, big fan of the Type S. Um, my initial impressions really held true this week. This is a fantastic daily, fantastic car, um, really awesome to live with. So we'll end on that note. We'll be coming out with some more videos for you guys, comparing this to the Type R directly back after back, a kind of going in depth with some of the subtle differences uh, after driving both cars. But uh, until then, stay tuned for more videos. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Oh, and because we're in a parking structure, we have to do a little bit of this. <laughs> okay. It does look proper, too. It's like Acura made a Hellcat out of the regular Integra. 